Welcome to Broad Ideas. Thanks, Rachel. Welcome. Thanks, Olivia. Thanks, Rob. Uh, you guys, I've had a lot of caffeine and no food, so this is going to go great. Woo, woo. This is when we like you the most. I know. Or as you would say, if we're interviewing anybody, male. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, comes to that. I come to that. No, stop it. Um, today we have Amanda Klutz, who <laughs> <laughs> I knew what you were gonna say. Don't say it. What? I don't know. I thought you were gonna say who is not male. Oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I wasn't. Um, she is a TV personality, a dancer, which is I'm sorry, so impressive. She was a rockette. I think that is massively impressive. Um, actress, fitness instructor. She is on the talk. She was on Dancing with the Stars secretly, like, in another life. You should do Dancing with the Stars. I'm not going to do it. But you should. But I really respect it. You and I think it, it looks She's really like, but fun. I would win. She should do it, right? Uh, yeah. She has a children's book that is out called Tell Me Your Dream. Mm. Also respect a children's book author. Also respect a children's book author. <laughs> She's doing it. I'm doing the thing. No, I was talking about Amanda. No, I'm doing it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's have Amanda join us. <laughs> he loves the compliments. It was so funny. We were talking to him. We were like <laughs> talking about like guys' heights uh. and like guessing their height. Is it offensive? Like, it would be for a guy to ask a girl, like, what size bra do you wear? You know? Like, yeah, yeah, Is yeah, it yeah. offensive to guess a guy's height? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so funny because I have a date tonight and I've never seen a picture of this guy. This is… <gasps> Wait, you've never seen a picture? No. It's a blind date. Um, You know what, guys? I'm so sick gonna, of okay. dating that it's come to the point where I don't even care. Like, <gasps> yeah. I'll just show up. And go it's to dinner. It's not going to be a good. So, like, right. doesn't matter. You just matter. put it out there. You're doesn't like, it's not matter what you look good. like, to be honest. <laughs> just, you're well, like, like, I'll just go. I go because that's where we're at. Yeah, yeah. contrary action. That's where we're at. So like this, these two people were like, you should meet my friend. And I was like, sure. <laughs> but what a great attitude to have. I mean, I guess. But then today we were texting. He's like, see you tonight. I was like, great. I was like, I don't have any idea what you look like. I'm blonde and tall. And he goes, how tall are you? I was like, 5'10". <laughs> and then there was a silent. And he said, I'm tall too. I was like, great. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's good. That's promising. That's good. Yeah. Because you are. You're so tall. You're tall. I'm very tall. And yes. if you put yeah. me in a heel, then I'm very tall. Right. right. And how I love wearing heels. Right. So, yeah. So, how was that for you? Like, girl, I don't know. Wait, are we are we starting? I mean, or I don't know. We just that, go into it. Do you care, care if that was no, Yeah, do you we, care if that's we, in? I don't care. I'm okay. A, I, I, oh, I like it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Because I do want to talk to you about all of the things. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. But yeah, I mean… <laughs> Because I always wonder, you know, and I, I was always very, like, short and small. And my best friends were always so tall. And yeah. I always wonder, like, what it's like on the other side. What best friends? In elementary school. <laughs> oh, I was like, not you. dare you? Yeah, I, I know. Like, we're all, like, <laughs> you tiny other people. Friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not you. <laughs> but yeah, it was a thing. I have dated, I, I was dating a guy that was 5'6", like, a long, long, long time ago. And I, really? yeah, I don't know. It didn't bother me at all. In you. fact, I would like purposely wear heels around him. Hmm. But then Nick was 6'5". So he like six that five. spoiled he me rotten. Six wow. Five. Yeah. That's so tall. That spoiled me. So now I do have a little bit of like, like if people are going to set me up, which is kind of, I only go by referrals these days. It's yeah. like, I'm, yeah. I can't do any, I'm, I'm done <laughs> with any other... So now it is sort of like, is he tall? It's always like, is he tall? Right. Yeah. Because on dating apps, they lie all the time. They lie, huh? Lie all the time. How? What is the point of that? Because they're going to show up and you're going to yeah, see gonna them see. with your eyeballs. I don't know. I mean, I guess they get you there. They get so, you there. So that's <laughs> happening. They better be funny yeah. then. <laughs> they're never funny. <laughs> <laughs> you would hope they'd come with something. Oh, gosh, guys, I could write a book. Yeah, oh, you, should you, should. you should write a book. You should write a book. You should. Oh, because, maybe like, I will. What, how crazy to go, you know, back in that scene and, like, have to date and yeah. all the shit and in yes. LA and all the things that come along yes. with it. And basically for the first time at 40, because I was married before Nick. I right. got married at 24. Oh my God. And 
the only person I dated before that was the guy that was five, six. So then I was with my husband for seven years. Then we got divorced and that led right into Nick. So I'm wow. literally dating for the first time. Yeah. At, 40. I'm 41 now, but I started yeah. dating at 40. Well, let me ask you because yeah. I just turned 42 and I feel like at this age, it's like the only time where I feel like dating, I'm fully myself. I know what I want. I know all these things, you know, and yeah. it's kind of like this really interesting mindset to go into it with. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I pretty much know instantly if I would care, if I care to actually sit there for the rest of the day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and also if I had ever want to see them again. Yes. Right. Yeah. And I will say the difference between dating after a divorce and dating after a loss is like completely different. Yeah. After a divorce, right. I mean, I didn't really believe in love and marriage. I was sort of just like, this is all a sham. But I was like excited in a way to like date again because it was going to be fun to like maybe yeah. find somebody that I was more connected with. But dating after a loss is really, I mean, especially at first, it sucks because you're like, you're leaving this date and you're like, this shouldn't be my life. Like, yeah. why is this my life? This is right. not fair that this is my life. Why well, I, I had it figured out. I had uh, a person. Oh. It sucks. Yeah. So that's where like, and I'm over that now, but like, that's how it was at first. It was like not an easy get back for that reason. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. I can't even imagine what, you know, like grief in itself is such a fucking challenge. Yeah. Right. And just the worst. And <laughs> I mean, the worst. And yeah. you had a very young child. Like, how old yeah. was Elvis? One? Was a year. He was one. I'm, he was mm-hmm. one year old. I know. It's listen to this. This is uh, just. Quick dating. This happened to me not too long ago. Set up by a friend and blind date. Did not know the person at all. Had seen a couple of photos though. So I walk in, we sit down and I go, this will be really fun. I was like, I I knew nothing about you. So like, this will be interesting. He goes, yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I don't need you. He goes, well, you're a widow. <gasps> what? <laughs> what? That was his lead in? <laughs> That's his opener. Like, let me. Oh, you guys, I started laughing because I didn't know what to say. And it turned out fine. Like, he was a nice guy. But, like, way to kill all romantic vibes. Immediately. Right out the, the gate. Back. Oh, so <laughs> you're a widow on an uptick. <laughs> like, this is not, yeah, this isn't like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> This yes, a celebratory yeah. right statement. You're like, hey, like, you have this. Yes, it's this is like, on your. <laughs> well, we both know Rachel. Yeah, like, it's not that. It's like, it was the weirdest. Like I swear, it was. It was just. It took me so off guard, and then I was just like, okay, well, now we'll just talk. Get right? into because, yeah, because like, yeah. like that's the opener. Yeah, I, I, I weren't, like romantic vibes are killed. Yeah. Killed. So <laughs> right. Might as well get so, to know you. Yeah. <laughs> so you had a, a friend date out of it. <laughs> it's very sexy. Yeah. Very, yeah. yeah. How did you sexy. get yourself back to a place where you were even willing? Like what was that process like for you? It was, I started off by, by just dating other widowers. Oh. Um, because and, it was like a safe, comforting wow. space. But again, though that was, I think, just to like rip band-aids off and like be next to a man in a setting that was like a date. But I would always drive there like crying usually and then thinking like, um, this is just an adult conversation. You can have an adult conversation. It, it doesn't have to do anything more than that. Just be an adult and talk to another adult. So that was like my mind frame going into it. And then we would end up just talking about our dead people the whole day, which really kills all right. romantic vibes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right. But um, but it was it was how I got back out there. Right. Yeah. But then it really wasn't until after Dancing with the Stars that I felt comfortable being around a man again and being touched by a man, held by a man, wow. laughing with a man, connecting with a man, and like that whole experience. I mean, gave me so many things, but that at the end, I was like, oh my God, I, I, I am okay now. Like I actually, I want to do this now. Yeah, I want to date and I want to like get, you know, in wow. a romantic relationship again. Like yeah. that would be great. So yeah. yeah. Who was your partner again? Alan Burstyn. Okay. Good friend. He's Aww. still my good friend. I love him dearly. That's yeah. so sweet. He gave me such a gift. Yeah. I was going to wow. say the people that come into your life, yes. you know, and for the, even if you don't see the, the reason at the time. Yeah. And then reflecting on it and everything. But that's totally. so beautiful. And yeah. you were able to just 
Yeah, because like, you know, I grew up dancing. And, right. and so dancing with a man was always normal for me. Mm-hmm. You know, being held by a man, touched by a man, you know, holding hands, getting close. Like, so going into rehearsal day one and him like grabbing my waist and pulling him to me, like if that would have been a man on a date, I would have been like, get off no. me. Like, what are you doing? Right. But because we were in this dancing setting, it like, I was like, oh yeah. Like, okay, yeah. Like, how close do you need me? Like, what, what do you need <laughs> yeah. to do? Yeah. You know what I mean? And then that every day for hours and hours and hours. And then luckily we made it to the end. So we got so close and it just got so natural being in a man's arms again mm. um, that it made me like completely ready to like, go for it again. Isn't that crazy? It's so cool. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Oh, yeah. It was, yeah. it was like, so I, I told Alan at the end, I was like, you have no idea like how much you helped me like <laughs> just push past this terrible thing. Yeah. <sighs> I know. I know. I I'm know. like, I know you've done a lot of healing yeah, on it, but we like, haven't yet done. on it. Yeah. <laughs> we're just you going know? through it all. Yeah. You know? And what is that like? I know losing my dad young that when people would be like, oh, what happened? Or Mm. are you okay? And all that stuff. I remember it would be uncomfortable to talk about, not because I was uncomfortable talking about it, but because of the way it made other people feel. Uh Uh-huh. Yes. How has that experience been for you? When did your dad die? When I was 15. Oh, okay. So a long, long time ago. But I mean, I remember when you deal with grief and you finally get good with it in a way, but then yes. every time you talk to someone, it brings something up in them. Yes. Yeah. You know, I'm okay with this now. I'm good now. It's funny. Like, it's been three years, and I I just I just met a fellow widow that is, is new on the scene. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we, we met up, and, um, uh, you know, I, I try to do this with anyone that reaches out to me that's a widower or a widower because it's such an awful club. And so I was like, let's meet up. Let's go for a walk. Let's meet for a coffee. And she was asking me, like, so how are you doing? And I was like, you know what? I can finally say, like, three years out, I'm really finally doing good. Like mm. I'm doing good. I can talk about it. Yeah. I can celebrate birthdays and anniversaries without having a terrible day leading up and the terrible day of and the terrible day after. Um, I'm at like a really finally a good place. And I think it took like this long. Yeah. Which yeah. is totally fine. There's no time. I'm not saying right. there's a time limit on right. it. If it took me 10 years, it took me 10 years. And I'm not saying I'm even healed by any way, shape or form. Right. Um, but yeah, I feel like I'm okay now. Yeah. I know it's just, <laughs> just, you know, but it's a never ending story. <laughs> right. You know? Right. Yeah. And going yeah. through it yeah. with a child and like everything, like, yeah. you know, and having to be there for them and, and go through it all. Yes. And Elvis, I haven't even, that hasn't crossed. That'll be a whole nother layer yeah. of right. this onion that we peel. Right. Once he starts, like next birthday is on Sunday. And, um, yeah. And so I'm taking Elvis out to Nick's favorite restaurant, which is Del Frisco's, which is the restaurant that we loved in New York. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to get all dressed up. I'm going out to Del Frisco's. So I was telling you about this and he goes, is Dada going to come? I know. (laughs) I know. I I know. And I was like, no, no, no. I was like, Dada died. And he was like, he was like, oh, okay. Like, so he still doesn't, like, he, doesn't he gets understand it, but he doesn't it fully understand. Yeah. yeah. So there's a whole bridge there that we have Eventually. not even crossed, you know? Right. And so who knows what, right. the, the, you know, what that'll be like for me, you know? I right. don't know. And for right. him. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but because he was so young, so he doesn't have, like, a lot of memories that he can, yeah. you know, that are graspable. At yeah. that age. Like, I'm sure there'll be things, you know, but yeah, the pictures and everything. But it's like if it was going to happen and he was that young, it's almost like, okay, at least there's not all this stuff that you already knew, so to speak. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to I like, it, it, there's no. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, no. I mean. He's it's, four? He's four. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Like, he doesn't. It is funny, though, like, because. I think it's just things that I've told him that yeah. he remembers. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I mean, he loves Sorry. looking. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I mean, he loves looking at pictures of Nick and like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. You know, we'll, 
I think that, you know, whether you lose and someone at 15 or one, I mean, it's like, there's just, I mean, there, you know, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know. The answer. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to fix it. I do. I don't, yeah, I don't no, have no, answers, no, nobody has any answers, right? Yeah. <laughs> there is one beautiful thing I think about, um, like, for whoever your partner ends up being, there's almost something um, beautiful about the fact that hopefully it'll be someone that can celebrate Nick as well and help yeah. share mm-hmm. the yeah. memories well, I think or the stories. And like, you know, which yeah. is different than if people get divorced or if people, yes, you know, like there is yeah. something beautiful about that. Yes. Yeah. I Sorry agree. Sorry for crying. No, no. no. I, and you know what I always thought of too is like that person, which I definitely hope to find one day, will be the father figure in Elvis's life. Right. Which is also a crazy thought. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Like, right. And it's a lot to ask of somebody. I, I always think of that too. Like, it's like you're asking somebody to jump in to that role. It's, you know, it's not easy. No. It's not an easy ask. Right. Um, but I have a, a lot of my widow friends that are remarried and have kids Yeah, have told me that they're like, yeah, Amanda, that's the only way. Like you, you need a partner that is so self-confident and yeah. self-assured of themselves right. Right. that they can, yes, talk to Nick, talk about Nick, celebrate Nick, see photos. And I mean, of course, like I can't, I can't have any other energy other than that. No. Right. I mean, and obviously, like, Nick is not a threat. <laughs> you were, it's like, you know, I'm eager to find love again. Right. <laughs> we're not uh, hoping he comes back. <laughs> you know. So, yeah. You're yeah. so, your energy and your attitude towards everything is really beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Sweet of you. Thank you. Yeah. And you're going to get to give that to your kid because how you frame it is how he's going to hold it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And, and listen, we are doing this together. I mean, one thing I can say about Elvis and like, you know, Nick went into the hospital when he was 10 months. So it has been Elvis and I pretty much yeah. the whole ride. And we have an insane bond and I I love it and I cherish it. And I feel like even though he's four, like he gets me. Like, yeah. you know, like he knows, but he's like, just going to I give her some space. <laughs> like, it's, it's so random, guys. Like I feel like, like it's very yeah. We're we're really um, we're an interesting little pair. He's your together. dude, little yeah. soulmate. Yes, he is. He's an old soul. I said it from day one. The moment I locked eyes with that kid, I was like, I looked at Nick and I was like, he's an old soul. Yeah, this is crazy. Um, so yeah, I yeah. Don't know. We'll see. No, I know, but you know, as like I'm a single mom, so I can speak to it. It's like yeah. this. It's like. The two of you, you know, yeah. she has, of course, my daughter has a father and, and yeah. very apparent, you know, in her life. Yes. But, you know, when it is just us, it's like, yeah. you just form this thing like, oh, we're a team. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. you and I. Yeah. This is a thing. Yeah. That's what I say to Elvis. We've <laughs> handshake. They go, you and I are a team forever. Because <laughs> you're right. It's like, it's, yeah, we're just it's yeah. the two of us. Yeah. yeah. And you, you know, you don't done such amazing for yourself, like career-wise and everything and just keeping things Thank going. You. And you know, But I want to ask you as a mother and a single mother, like having to leave him and having to do all this, how do you cope with that? I mean, it's, it's crazy. Like sometimes it's okay. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's fine and good and you feel like everything at home is working so I can go out and do this work stuff too. And, mm-hmm. and the balance is key. And then other times, you know, he's going, you have to leave again. And he's sobbing and screaming. And you're like, oh my God, I'm the worst person in the entire world. Like, what am I doing? Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to find that balance. I know. Because it's like, you also have to fill your own cup. I truly, truly believe this. Like if you're married, you have to fill that cup first to be great parents. And if you're a single mom or single dad, you have to fill this cup to be there for your kid. Um, so, and I love to work. Yeah. I love to work. Mm -hmm. I love to create and I love to hustle and I love to just like kind of be on all cylinders at all the time. Right. So including being a mom in that too. So yeah, I don't know. But it's also showing them if you love doing it, then that's the right message. That's true. Yeah, Yeah. of course. Yeah, Yeah, and we say that all the time. Yeah. What fills your cup the most out of everything you're doing? 
like work wise. Work wise. Yeah, work wise. Yeah, um, you know, lately it's just been like, I just love creating an idea mm-hmm. and then somehow making it happen. And then when you see it formulate in front of you and materialize, it's like amazing. Whether I'm a part of the idea or it's just a creation of mine, I just love it. I love thinking of something, whether a book or a movie or a or a television show idea or something, and then just like making it happen. It's just so fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so what, fun. and again, what an example. <laughs> like, just like, okay, yeah. I'm gonna do this thing. And yeah. Doing it's like it. it's crazy. It's crazy yeah. when you like, I mean, I love manifesting and vision boards and all of that stuff. So it's very crazy when like you put something out there and then, you know, it happens, what, you know, a year, two years, three years down the road, whatever, but like it's crazy. Yeah. Isn't that the best feeling? It best. is. It's addictive. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. addictive. It is addicting. It is addicting. Yeah, it yeah. is. You yeah. Got, like, lately, yeah. I have ideas. I'm like, I just want them to like, happen now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Calm down. I know, right? You get so just in on it. Yeah. We, we're so into manifesting. We talk about it all the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. What, yeah. Can we, what can we make happen? <laughs> I know. It's so fun. It is. The, and and that's, the, that's the gift is the, in the actual doing is fun. It's yes. not the end result. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. you get the end result. Yeah. But then when you get it, you're not like, well, I'm done. You're yes. like, what's next? next. Right? <laughs> because you get, like, off on that part. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 You, but having the energy to do it's another thing. <laughs> like, you get going, well, and then you're like, oh, I'm Did you guys celebrate child. the new moon yesterday? No. Was it a new? So my mom always tells me this. No, stuff we didn't. And no, ladies, no. it was a big manifesting moon. What? <laughs> oh man, How did we not maybe know you can that? get it. No, when was maybe it? You can like, still get it. Yeah, on last. It. What did we celebrate? The the blue moon. Yeah, was we not celebrated too long ago. the blue, the blue moon, moon. But we no, did like the, a whole, um, the no, the moon? lion thing. Oh, the lion's gate. Oh, the lion's portal? gate's a great one. Yeah, yeah. That's a great that. one. We did do that one. Yeah. We did okay. a whole manifesting. <laughs> we were aware of that okay. one. That's a big yeah. one. That's a big portal. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you get your information on the Instagram. moon? Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I just follow all these like Pisces and moon things. Right. And, you know, and it'll just, tell you. Yeah. Are you a Pisces? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I love that though, because if you follow, it's like so right on. Yeah. You know? I know. I feel hey. bummed we missed the new moon. And my mom always reminds me. She's ah, off her game. She's mom. off her game. Well, talk to her. maybe you can still get in on it. Maybe there's like, you know, Yeah, maybe a window. the window's still open. Yeah, maybe yeah. the I like to think so. We're yeah. going to manifest that. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that why not? Yeah. Broad Ideas is supported by Blissey. Who knew that a better pillowcase is all you need for better sleep? Let's talk about practicing self-care while you sleep. Set yourself up with Better Sleep with Blissey's award-winning 100% Mulberry Silk Pillowcases. Seriously, silk is what's best for your hair and skin. It reduces frizz, tangles, and prevents breakage. That's because it keeps the moisture in your hair and keeps your skincare products and natural moisture on your skin. While cotton literally absorbs it off of your face. Say goodbye to wrinkles, dry, flaky, and red skin in the morning and wake up with healthier and shinier hair. Blissey pillowcases are made of 100% mulberry silk, which is naturally hypoallergenic, so you can sleep more comfortably without itching or rashes. I love my Blissey silk pillowcases. My daughter loves the Blissey silk pillowcases. She actually won't sleep without it anymore, but I love what it does for my hair. I normally have super frizzy hair, and it has kept it in check. Everybody loves them. They have a ton of different prints and colors, and they make great gifts because there's an option for literally anyone. Men love them too. They have over 1 million raving fans, and you could be next. Try now risk-free for 60 nights at blissy.com slash Rachel and get an additional 30% off. That's B-L-I-S-S-Y dot com slash Rachel and use code Rachel to get an additional 30% off. Your skin and hair will thank you. Broad Ideas is supported by Quince. Who doesn't love the good things in life? Even though I enjoy a little luxury, it doesn't mean I can always afford it until I discovered Quince. Quince is my go-to for luxury essentials at affordable prices. Quince offers a range of high-quality items at prices within reach, like 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters from $50 washable silk tops and dresses, organic cotton sweaters, and 14-karat gold jewelry. The best part, all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. I love that. 
I am obsessed with my fisherman sweater from Quince, but not only that, you guys, their bedding is so cute, so soft, and it really gave my bed an upgrade. Give yourself the luxury you deserve with Quince. Go to quince.com slash ideas for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash ideas to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash ideas. What is the biggest thing that you had an intention for and manifested and saw come to life? Um, you know, I think I think the Christmas movie I did last year. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. I was I it came to me laying in bed one night at like 2 a.m. and I was just like, Bing, and I was like, this could be a fun thing. And then and then it happened. There it was. And there it was. And then, you know, and like, and seriously, like in all purpose, like in all respects, like it, it should never have happened because even though I'm an actor and I, I do love that, I've never created anything before like a movie and I've never acted in a movie. I did Broadway shows and I was in the ensemble as a dancer. So CBS said yes to this plan where I was the star in this movie and they had <laughs> never seen me <laughs> act on camera because guy, I had never acted on camera. <laughs> and so like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. they just said yes. And luckily, it worked out. I like, would too. But do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I would they, say yes. I would. Yes. I would say yes. I would. <laughs> but do you know how bonkers that is? Like, if yeah. you look back, it's kind of wild that they weren't like, we love the idea. Let's just do like a screen test on you to make sure that you can act. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah I but I know, but you just, but they, what were you going to say? Oh, sorry. No, I thought I was ahead. cutting you off. No, but you just, it's so clear. Like, you just, like, beam, like, so much oh, thanks, light bro. and light. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it worked. It, no, I think that's amazing. No, no. And what a Thank beautiful you. example. To just it was so fun. It was Do so that. Fun. You got to do another one. Are yeah, you doing I would love to do, yeah. yes, more and more and more. Yeah. It was so fun. You know, years on Broadway, like, Broadway is such a different you know, it's a, me- a different medium. You're doing the same thing every day. And it's right. the whole thing every day. Every time. Yeah. Yeah. And then so when I was doing this movie and I was like, so like that scene's done. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to, like those lines, I can just, yeah. like, yep, yep, moving on. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> I was like, I love this. <laughs> like all I have to worry about is that with what we're doing today. It's right. like, it was like, right. my moment. Yeah. Was it yeah. hard for you to adjust to? I know for myself, it was hard coming from theater to adjust to when I did something and then it's out of sequence. And you're like, wait, okay, yeah. where am I coming from? And where it's like, in, when you're doing theater, you yeah. get to live the whole thing out. Right. Yes, yes, yes. That was, yeah, that was funny to understand. I didn't, yeah. I, right. I, I came into this so green, you guys. Like, <laughs> I really was like keeping so much shut because I was thinking so many dumb questions that I was like, I can't ask this out loud. <laughs> like, they will fire me day one. But yeah, that was fun. I was just like, so we're just starting in the middle. Like, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> just wherever. Yeah. And then I think at one point my acting coach was like, yeah, like just so you remember, like every day, just like kind of like remember like where you left like if you're coming in on a scene, try to think about like what scene you were just in and like <laughs> where you left that scene. I was like, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that easy. It's not. I no. know. You're like, wait, I have to keep all of this information. Yeah, totally. It's I like know. You can, you can let it go. You slide it over and move it to the left, but also right. you're like, wait. wait. Oh yeah, I was crying. Okay. Oh my God. There's so many <laughs> right. times I have to tell you where I've been caught like... No. If you watch like an episode <laughs> of something and you see me in one scene and then the next scene, they're like, that doesn't match anything <laughs> that happened or like what you were just going through. And I'm like, oh, what? Like, you know, because episodic, you're yeah. doing them all the time. So fast. And so directors oh might not catch like, oh, well, this doesn't, you know what I mean? And like, right. and because I'll be like, Oh, oh. Like, that's what I was doing. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, Rachel, you need to read the script. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So like, even with like TV episodes, they film it like all over the yeah. place. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Always. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, hey, yeah. it's hard to keep track. 
You're yeah. doing like so many. Yeah. You they know, can't expect you to understand where no, you just were. I can't keep track. <laughs> this is all bleeding together at this point. They you wanted know? me to read it. <laughs> yeah, they said no. I should read the script. You could be doing a breakup scene that's like pure yeah. tears oh, and no, heartbreak, done, yeah. and you haven't even met the person before. Yeah. Right. right? And then yes. in the next scene, you're falling in love. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like- It is so wonkers. Like, you know, in these Christmas movies, you have one kiss at the end. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, which is lovely. Um, but we, yeah, we filmed that first kiss like day three. I mean, if they would have filmed it on the last day, Paul and I would have given you a lot of a- Right. Our, you, our romantic kiss would have been so much better because right? we like completely Knew each bonded. Other. Yeah. And, you know, loved each other as friends. And like, we would have just been like, get out of here. Right. But day three, we were like, hello. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's you true. Know. Yeah. But I they're know. organizing it on the daylight or nighttime or yes. location. Nothing yeah. to do with the story. Yeah. I, no, I feel like there are- have to act. Right. That's the part. That part. That whole thing. That old chestnut. That part. That old no, bit. but I do think there are certain directors and people that are like, I'm going to shoot this chronologue. Not often. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does there anybody? Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. I feel Who like it was. It? There's a really famous one. Is it? Well, I don't want to. We don't want to butcher I it. I feel like Clint Eastwood would do that. I think it's right. like. Someone like that. Like Scorsese. He's a one taker. Not Scorsese, but like. Like Quentin Tarantino. Tarantino or I something. Don't know. We're just still- naming all the biggest. All the we're like, we're just going to throw. <laughs> All these out there, and one of them definitely does that. But wait, though, so isn't it good that you only do one take? With one take. I've heard that. That's kind of amazing. With I would who? love that. I think Clint I would, Eastwood. too. Oh, damn I, that's one take. pressure. I think I would, I would like love that, it. too. Me, too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. done. Okay. Yeah, it's like theater. You don't mm-hmm. have another take. You do it. Yeah. Maybe that, yeah. That's but why I would like it, I think. It's like yeah. Broadway for years is also a whole other thing. Yeah. And like… To be dancing and the ensemble was like music. You were a rockette. Yeah. Yep. I did rockettes too. Yeah. What was yeah. that yes. like? I know. I'm like, this is just mind blowing. <laughs> rockettes was so fun, guys. I mean, I was 22 and then I did it again when I was 24. So you are just, you know, game face ready to be torn apart, ripped to shreds, and you just want to be perfect, which is the whole mentality there. Right. (laughs) Ripped to sheds. You have to be perfect and, you know, just be young and so that you can wear, I mean, the the wear and tear on your body in in that show is ridiculous. You were doing, I did five show days as a Rockette. Not always, but I did do five show days. Now I think the most is four, but they're hour and a half shows. You don't stop moving. You change your costume like 13 times and you're dancing on a steel stage in three inch heels um, you know, 200, wow. 300 kicks a show. I mean, you're just completely exhausted wow. in every way, shape and form. And then, you know, they tell you if like your pinky is out of line. I mean, like literally they'll be like, you know, your pinky, it needs to be here. Whoa. And you're like, yes. I mean, I, I mean, it's, it's that detailed. So wow. Wow. it's very much like, being military, you know? Yeah, sounds like Um, it. And I loved it. And it was like a lifelong goal of mine, but I ended up loving Broadway more just because I loved having a character. I loved um, singing and acting as well. You know, Rockets is just dancing. So um, I, I tended to, you know, want to just do Broadway after my two years as a Rocket, but I'm so glad I did it. I mean, it was so Was it something that you just like dreamt of as like a kid or yeah my dad took us to they used to do an easter show and my dad took our whole family once to the easter show i think it was like 1997 or something like that and um we took a tour backstage and i have like a picture i don't know where it is but there's like a picture of myself in the rehearsal studio with like my leg up and i was just like i want to be a rocket one day so that's so amazing there you go i know i know and my opening night at radio city um, my whole family was there. Aww. We were all crying and I was crying and like, yeah, That's it was, so uh, sweet. yeah, it was That's a really so special. Fun, yeah. yeah. Did you enjoy time. it? I did. Yes. Okay. Met, I mean, here's, hard. <laughs> here's the best things about it. You go to work at Radio City Music Hall every day during Christmas. So Woof. you are yeah. just yeah. like, yeah. it's so fun. And you're in this like little sorority because it's all girls and you find the best of friends there. Like some of my best friends still to this day are those girls that I met doing Aww. Rockettes my first year. And now so we've cool. seen each other, you know, get married, get divorced, have kids. Like we've been a part of each other's lives for years. 
And it's like that bond where I could not see them for five years and you see them and then it's just like immediately back together. So you have like the best of friends, the best of times. Um, You get to do really fun, cool press and stuff because it's such an iconic, you know, group of women. So you get to go all over the country and all sorts of stuff. Um, So yeah, it's just a fun thing. It's just also a very hard mental game. And they you know, like I said, they want perfection. I mean, you sign up for it. So it's not even something like surprise. It's yeah. like- No, from that's what the, you're going in on. Yes. Like from the audition, you understand what they need from you, what they're looking for. Messing up is not an option. Mm. And Woo. yeah, that's it's- a lot it's of intense. pressure. Yeah. Ooh, I couldn't do it. I couldn't but do it. But for like a dancer, <laughs> especially like leading into Broadway, it taught me so much about discipline and work ethic and how you act in a rehearsal space and studio, how you come to work, how you show up. Um, even still to this day, it's like that rocket mentality. It It's like ingrained in me. And they gave us media training. So it, that has stuck with me my entire life. I mean, that was just you know, I have no problem now doing any, I was like, what's my talking points? Got it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're just like, boom. Yeah. So it was, it's, it was honestly it was a, like, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. the best kind of boot camp or everything yes. Yes. that followed. And they take care of you. You have a 401k, you have um, full PT all year round. They give you scholarship money to go to school wow. to get other degrees. Wow. Like they really, really take care of the girls. You are in that's why a lot of girls will stay there for years and years and years and years. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. I never— how, how old do they go up until? I have a yeah, girlfriend. When do you age out? Yeah. Not going to age out. She's <laughs> not listening. No. Um, I think she's 43, 44. She's, this and is she's... like her 22nd season. <gasps> what? Yeah. Yeah. Woo! And she is still killing it. Like, you would never know. And she's gorgeous. And I can't believe her body still does it, but her body still does it. Wow. Yeah. Probably keeps her really in good shape. shape. (laughs) My God. Is that what got you into, like, the health and wellness, fitness? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, Broadway is such an up and down with work, right? Like, you're in a show— you're on like the biggest high, going to your Broadway show every night. And then the New York Times comes along, gives you a horrible review, and you're the next week back on unemployment, Ugh. back to nothing, right? So I found fitness as like the thorough line to mm-hmm. like keep mm-hmm. me stable. So that, you know, I of course went in and out of crazy jobs, hostessing, airbrush tanning people. I mean, like I okay. had <laughs> so many babysitting, of course, dressing up at children's birthday parties, doing oh, wow. bar mitzvahs, bot mitzvahs, you know, I did it all. Yeah. And then I found fitness as like, okay, I could teach at this studio in the mornings early enough, I could still make auditions if I had to or get somebody to cover me if I had to. And if I'm in a show, it's a great thing to keep my body in shape anyways. Mm -hmm. So it was like this thing that I was like, wait, this is amazing. And it was dance fitness. So it was like made even more sense. Yeah, perfect. And, um, and so many Broadway girls taught there. So it was just like, yeah, it was, it was called Body by Simone. That's where I first started teaching. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so cool. I think dancing is my favorite way to like Exercise. It's just because yeah. you're doing something and it's not so, yeah. you know, like at yeah. a gym. Yeah. And that's, so Broadway show, that's where you met Nick. I would yeah, imagine. that's where I met Nick. Were you guys Nick. in a show together? Bullets over Broadway. No yes. way. Yes, the yeah. very short-lived Woody Allen musical, as you can imagine why it was short-lived. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Picking up what you're putting down. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah. But it was a wonderful time and it was a, an amazing cast. It's where I met Zach Braff too. Um, the, all the ensemble girls were some of my best friends from the Rockettes. <laughs> and so it was like this amazing group of people. I mean, we had too much fun. Right. Yeah. Oh, that does yeah. sound fun. Yeah. And I'm like, why no bullets were brought? And then I forgot it was Woody. <laughs> you forgot what? It was Woody. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. I know that. I'm like a big musical nerd, which I don't share oh. often. I don't know why, but… Mm-mm. I don't know. I feel like it's like one of those things that's, I don't know. It's not what? embarrassing, but like people, it's a thing. Yeah. Oh, I really? Agree. People you sometimes so? hide it. <laughs> I think I'm a closet, like closet. I oh. love show tunes. I love all of it. Like, yeah. Our other best friend, Lee, and I will just like. You know, <laughs> every single lyric to every single oh, really? show. Yeah. I love that. Well, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh, I guess we do. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a hidden talent. It is funny, like being away from it now, like because I left Broadway when I started my fitness business, so like 2016. Hmm. And 
now, like even just watching the Tony Awards and I, I, I love it so much, but it's just like, it's so funny to see like all the jazz hands and, oh, and the so, so much happiness and yeah. the expression. And I'm like, oh my God, it's like you're away from it and you forget how like natural, like it just comes. Oh just yeah. Like, ah. <laughs> yeah. So overly animated and yeah, yeah especially so- coming now doing like film, whatever. And then yeah. you see that you're like, <laughs> like, could you imagine ever doing like that big and broad? Yes. On camera? Like, Try it. Let's see it. <laughs> <laughs> like, did you guys ever see the SNL? Um, it's a, it's one of my favorite skits with Catherine Zeta Jones. It was when she was doing Chicago, but like she walks into a party <laughs> and everyone's just in Chicago and like doing Fosse yeah. and they're like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and I just doing all these things. And I feel like that's how I look at Broadway now, where like everyone is just like always on. Uh, always on. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think but, there's yeah. people like that too that are always on. There yeah. are. You know? Would yeah. you go back? Yeah, I mean, I never say never anymore. Yeah. I mean, I I feel like it would have to be like the right thing, um, of course. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's such a special, special community. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a beautiful place to work and be a part of. And there's just no people like show people. There really are. I mean, yeah. it's really no like, business. yeah. Like show <laughs> and Rachel takes it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, but truly, it really is. I mean, especially like during COVID, like the Broadway community, I, I, I was blown away by the like mm. the love and support that they gave to us. I mean, it, it really just was a reminder of like, I am so lucky to be a part, to have been a part of these families because it really is a family. Every show is a little family and every theater is a family. And you walk back in, I was talking to my friend the other day about this. Like you walk back into a theater where you used to do a show and you literally like, it's like a, you get chills. It's like ghosts are there. Like you just see everything. Mm-hmm. You remember everything. And it just feels like you're coming home. Um, and it's just so special. Yeah. You know, it's just mm-hmm. a special place. Yeah. Broad Ideas is supported by Sundays for Dogs. I love Sundays for Dogs because it has a short list of human grade ingredients, so I don't have to question what I'm giving to my little Gert Gert. Sundays is fresh dog food, like I said, made from a short list of human grade ingredients. It contains 90% meat, 10% superfoods, and 0% synthetic nutrients or artificial ingredients. Dog parents report noticeable health improvements in their pups, including softer fur, fresher breath, better poops, and more energy after switching to Sundays. I also have noticed my little Gertie, her skin was super pink. She has allergies, I think she does anyway, but since I started feeding her Sundays, it has visibly reduced. Unlike other fresh dog food, Sundays does not require refrigeration or preparation because of their air drying process. Just pour and serve. When you start a Sunday subscription, you'll automatically get 20% off and free shipping on every reorder. Cancel or pause your subscription anytime with our 100% satisfaction guarantee. Every order ships right to your door, so you'll never worry about running out of dog food again. I love how easy Sundays for dogs is because you just open it, you pour it, and they're ready to eat. Get 40% off your first order of Sundays. Go to sundaysfordogs.com slash ideas or use code ideas at checkout. That's sundaysfordogs.com slash ideas or use code ideas at checkout. So yeah. special. I'm so cool to have had that experience. I'm yeah, very grateful for it. Yeah, yeah. I just, you know, as a kid, like they would take us in high school to like theater shows in New York. It like, took us to a trip to New York and it was the yeah. biggest deal ever. And I'm thinking about my daughter now who really shows promise of like always yeah. wanting to perform, which yeah. I'm not oh. encouraging How by old any is she, means. Rachel? She's eight. She's almost nine. Okay. Yeah. So she's really like, oh my God. This is the time. See her acting out her Taylor Swift songs. Oh my God, Amanda, I can't. It's she's like so good. Like oh, yes. so in it. And she I'm is. like, yes. oh it's a God, thing. It, it okay. is a thing, you know. But it's so cool, like just exposing them to to that. You yeah. Know? And how cool to be able to tell Elvis. Like that his parents were like on yeah. Broadway. Like, I just think it's such an amazing thing. And I think honestly, like for your daughter, I think that age, like I started dancing at 10. I think it's really, really good. Even if she does nothing with it, to you know, to instill that, like, 
you're brave, you're on stage, you're performing, or whatever. Yeah. you have to get up in front of people, you have to do something. It's like no matter what you end up doing in life, it's just good skills to have, you right. know, like it's in also life. Confidence building. Yes. You know, and we yeah. I've been talking about that a lot. Like having her stick to whatever, if it's sports or she's gonna learn an instrument, she wants to learn the guitar. Of course, Love she wants it. to be Taylor Swift. So yes. <laughs> but like just all these things. And if you get good at something and you feel so good, yeah. it's just really instilling that. Yeah. Just that confidence. Yeah. 100%. And it's so hard because kids and at school and all the other kids and oh God, what they have to do. I know. I mean, you still have a way, yeah. thankfully. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah. it's it's fucking hard. There's so many times where you're like, I'm going to go to school and I'm going to like <laughs> scream at yeah. that child. It's not easy bringing yeah. them up. Yeah. But that's all you can do is just try to just really boost up their confidence. And I th- unless they really suck. <laughs> <what they're> doing. <laughs> okay, no, I have a question for you about that because here's the thing. So I was away this weekend at a wedding and our friend's daughter, who's 22 now, okay. the daughter's 22. And she said she would have always wanted to be a singer, but that her mom told her, listen, honey, the people that do that for a living, they're naturally talented. They have really good voices. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Basically, you're not gonna make it. You don't it. have that. <laughs> yeah. She's like, you basically, like, Ooh. you don't have the voice for that, right? Okay. And she said that's her biggest regret was telling her that. Oh. And oh. I don't know what her voice sounds like, yeah. but part of me wonders, like, what is the right way to nurture children in that way? Because even if they do, let's say, suck, like, I sucked at singing. Yeah. However, I'd be better now if... I went to see lessons. Supported. Right, right. If I was supported mm-hmm. and not told, like, you're tone deaf. Like, right. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, like, I think it's important that whatever a kid's natural inclination is to, yeah. right, that yeah. we go in on it. Well, I have a perfect example, okay? Because my mom's the opposite. She's like, <laughs> you're the most amazing singer, dancer, writer. You know what I mean? Like, I can play one thing on the guitar and it is the easiest thing. It's like, dun, 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 oh, dun. Yeah. and that's it. Right. Good party trick though. My mom tells everybody she's an amazing guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, mom, I don't know how to play the guitar. <laughs> you know? Oh, like, right. She's a she's natural. amazing. No, like, that's, <laughs> you know? But like, you think about that. And I think growing up, even her saying whatever, yeah. and I think she believes it. Yeah. Right? She does. I'm sure she I does. She yeah. definitely is not lying. Yeah. But I think growing up with that, regardless, I mean, did something. <laughs> Elvis was playing the drums this morning and all he was doing is... And I was like, you're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. I was like, right? I'm fiving him. <laughs> I'm, I'm like your mom, I guess. Um, no, but I, I think know. that's oh, yeah. big, you know, because if you're encouraging, even if they're not going to maybe be the best at it. Yeah. That's they what feel I mean. like yeah. they like, do. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. Because in, that's the hard part as a parent is you know their feelings are going to get hurt. Yes. Right. And so I think sometimes we come in and be, we're protective. Like, do yes. this right. thing. You're really, I see myself doing it with my son. I'm like, you're such an amazing artist because he is amazing. He's not a good baseball player. Yeah. You know, <laughs> he's not. Does he want to be? No. Oh, okay. No, okay. No, no, no. He'd rather be drawing. He'd rather be drawing. Okay. But um, I'm like, how much do we expose them to the things that they're not that great at and let them see what what's humility like? You don't yeah. have to be the best. Like, yeah. it's tricky. You, you know, know, my mom and dad, I don't know how they did what they did, but we there's five of us in my family, five kids. Yeah. And we all sort of kind of did similar things because, you know, as you grow up, like, well, your brother was in band, so you're in band and then you're in band, you know, like it was kind of that. (laughs) But then also like if somebody wanted to quit band, it was also like, okay, like you tried, you know, whatever. So it was never pushed on us. But like they were never, they never were like, you're amazing. They never overpraised. They just were always there. Mm. They were just supportive. They were at every recital at every competition, at every concert. And they they made sure that like, if I said I wanted to do piano lessons, I followed through with it. But they were never like, you're the best at this or you're never going to make it. They just were always there. Mm-hmm. And I feel like maybe that's the answer because then it allowed 
us to each find our own way yeah. in, right. and what we wanted to do. And then like for me, like in my senior year in high school, I was like, I want to be on Broadway. I want to do this. I'm sure that there was a part of them that was like, oh shit. I mean, can <laughs> she? Like they don't know because no one in my family had ever tried to move to New York and be on Broadway before. So they truly did not know yeah. if I was going to be good enough or not. But like they just supported me and let me try. And luckily it worked. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, like it was never, they never got <laughs> too involved, to be honest. <laughs> but they were always there. That's amazing. That is amazing. I, mean, I don't know. That's maybe such that's a good ticket. Yeah, maybe it is. You yeah. know, because it's like really giving you the space to find your yeah. own way or what it is that maybe you yeah. did. It's up. hard not to overpraise for me. Yeah. Oh, same. Oh, same. Is it? <laughs> oh. Same. Yeah, it's really hard. No, I'm oh. like, that was the most amazing yes. thing <laughs> you've ever written. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. It's like so, the biggest say, hype, man. Like, you can't help it. Yeah. Yeah, oh. and they say that that's Is it not hurting? The, they say it's not the best, to, like, to be like, good job. You're great. Like, supposedly that uh. then what they do is they try and keep going after that, mm. right? As opposed oh. to, like, the difference between being praised for being smart versus being praised for um, always trying. Uh. So if a kid's in oh. tests, they've studied it. Instead of being like, oh, wow, you got an A, you're so smart. Right, right. You praise them for, wow, you really stuck in there. You really you gave tried. it your best. You really tried. They did studies where they studied the two different effects of it. Oh, and wow. the kids that were praised for their efforts continued to get higher scores where the kids that were praised oh, I love pressure. That. went down. I could see that. Yeah. I So on my Instagram, I always post a positive thought in the morning every day. I've done it for seven years. Yesterday's was, I, you know, from somewhere, I grabbed it and, you know, put it up there. And it said in very faint letters, again, and then the again and again and again. And each time it said again, the letters got darker. Mm. And then the A started to slowly fade away and all you saw was gain. Mm. And it's that. It's like the more you try again and again and again and again, you gain. Mm. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It was such that. a cool little I like, love that. thing to see. But I feel like it just correlates to what you said. It's like 100%. Yeah. praise for the try. Right. Because eventually it'll be a gain. That's right. So right on. Because we are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Look Let's at these broad ideas that we are coming to the table with. <laughs> Come on. I mean, you guys, we have got it all figured wow. out. Yeah, we're trying. At least we we're are. trying we're to learn, trying. right? We we're are trying. trying. <laughs> again and again, we're trying. Again again. It's going to be again, okay? It is. <laughs> yeah. I see it in my daughter, though. Like, the pressure of oh, always only wanting oh. to, you know. I feel like you're mm -hmm. just starting at the age, too, yeah. where, like, it's just going to, you're going to get into, like, the thick of it. It's coming. Oh, yeah. I'm aware. Because she just started third grade, and it's different. It's I like, bet. you know, and she's feeling it, oh. feeling the pressure and everything. And I just, she's so sensitive, yeah. you know, oh. and just trying to guide her in the best way. It's just, oh. I think there's lessons every day, you know, as yeah. parents and women and yes. single moms yes. and grief yes. and, like, all of it. Yeah. And it's, yes. you know, it's interesting. It's like the universe is always throwing so much at you. Yeah. And then you always come out of it and you're like, I survived that. Yep. I survived that. Yes. I survived that. Yep. And, but then there are times and we talk about this a lot where we're like, what the fuck? Another one? I know. Here's and another my, one. Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> another one. Here's my new motto though that I've come up with. <clears throat> Ready? Yes. It is time to be ridiculously happy. I That's love my that. that is my motto for this season of my life. I had a I really beautiful that. summer with Elvis. It was very healing and therapeutic in the best way. And I came out of it and I was like, no, now it's time to be ridiculously happy. I love that. I love that. Thanks, guys. You, yeah. you can take it. I know. I'm like, I just yeah. need you like every day. I just need to hear you. Yeah, I, I'll you. tell you. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll text you. Please. Like, Rachel, ridiculously happy today. Yeah. That's all there is that we have to focus on. That's all there is. Yeah. It's been hard for a while. So it's it's ridiculously it's time. happy time. <laughs> you deserve it. Yeah. It's yeah. ridiculously happy. It's ridiculously time. happy. Well, I think yeah. it is about giving yourself that permission. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 
Actually, yeah. And mm-hmm. manifesting it. Right. I literally sit with my eyes closed at some point every day and just imagine my ridiculously happy life and what that is. Uh, that's, yeah. uh, that's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. That is what we, we got to do. do. Like feel maybe it in your every date fiber. tonight, you're going to be ridiculously happy. Maybe I will. I'm like dying to know. Like, Because ah, you too. haven't seen like a thing. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I Apparently I'll let tall. you guys know. Yeah. Um, I will let you know. He said you didn't tall. even have like an artist rendering of him. <laughs> <so> like, <laughs> that sounds like a courtroom criminal. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> They're like, but I have this. Oh, got it. Yeah. Can you imagine if it's like, yeah, his mug Oh my God. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, yeah. here's the thing. How do you, okay, so dating or whatever. Yeah. How do you feel about the first date who pays for the check? Um, I'm a bit of a traditionalist. Um, and so I would say that if he asked me out, then I would prefer, it'd be nice that if he would pay, mm-hmm. I'm not going to be thrown off guard or be disgusted if <laughs> disgusted. we split the bill. <laughs> I would probably, I think I always sort of do a reach or offer. Right. Uh-huh. Um, and I would say 9.9 times out of 10, I'm turned down. Like, absolutely not. Right. Like, I've got this. But I will say I'm the type of person when I date somebody, I love to spoil the person that I am yes. with. Yes. So you'll take me out to dinner, but then like, you know, in two dates, I'm going to be like, I'm picking you up in 10 minutes and you have no idea what you're doing and and I've covered the whole thing. Aww. So like, oh, hey. I want to date hey. you. Hey. <laughs> I, love, I, I love, know. Listen, it's, I love love. I love, yeah. it's so yeah. fun and exciting. And like when I actually find somebody that is worth my time and I connect with yeah. and I'm excited about, whether it lasts three weeks or three months or three years or forever, like I just kind of want to like, go in because yeah. it's a rare, it's rare for me to connect yeah. on that level with someone, especially yeah. now. So like if, if I do, then I'm just like, well, I have this fun thing I'm going to and I, and I just saw this on the internet and like, I want to do that. And like, I love doing stuff and being yeah. adventurous. So then I'm immediately like, well, I want to take this new fun person that I'm excited about. So yeah. yeah, I like to, I like to do those things. So I give I give back in that way. <laughs> no, I think that's amazing. I wish I could set you up with my husband. <laughs> I'm like, that would make him happy. You're like, that would make him so happy. I Can found you a girl. Be like, I, I have a date for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I want him to experience that. Right? <laughs> Didn't occur to me. I could do it. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh my, God. oh, my God. No, it's so, so true. Funny. I love that you do that. <laughs> I feel he's like slightly I taken, it. but he's available. Yeah, <laughs> right. Slightly. 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 Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Can you imagine what if you had like borrowed dates? Like, what if that was a thing? Like, and anyway, I just went to like, like an a gift app. To do like, an I don't know. Date. I borrow my time. friend's husband a lot if I have like, you know, because it's it's hard when you mm-hmm. are in this boat where you're like, I'd love to take a guy. You know what I mean? There's just sometimes you want a guy yeah. to yeah. take with you. Yeah. And so if I'm not seeing somebody, which is usually the case, (laughs) then my pickings are like my gay bestie who's great and I love him and he's always on board. And then also like my friend's husband's. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Who I know will be like, yes, you can borrow my husband for the evening. Um, and so I do. I, I sometimes borrow husbands because it's, yeah. sometimes you just need a guy on your yeah. arm. And, you I get know. it. I yeah. get it. What's like, what are the biggest red flags for you or what's your ick? It's, the ick is a big trend right now. It's such a trend. I know. I know. And I didn't know it until I was, I was dating a guy a little while ago and uh, I was saying a story and she's like, uh-oh, you got the ick. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she was like, <laughs> he gave you the ick, the ick. It's like, you're done. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got the ick. Um, yeah. All right. You want to know my ick? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Please don't take offense to this. It has You're not unoffendable. All right. Okay. And <laughs> listeners, please know that I love pets. We don't have people I listening. love dogs. I love mm-hmm. cats. I don't like cats as much, but I do love animals. Okay. <laughs> okay. But my ick is every single man in LA has a dog that they are obsessed with. <laughs> mm. And on dates, 
I am sitting there and all I'm looking at is videos and pictures <gasps> of their dog <laughs> on play dates, what? their dog Wait, what? at sleepovers, their no, dog no. at agility training, no. <laughs> their dog eating, drinking, hiking at the beach. Look at him at the beach. Look at him go. Are Look you at him go. Me? Look I'm at dead. him go at the Wait. beach. He's running. <laughs> and I... You know, here's here's the thing, ladies. I have an actual human that right. I take care of. Right. A child right. who is adorable. <laughs> Sorry, but he's adorable. Yeah. And I have yet on any dates, even if I'm on a fifth or sixth date with a guy, <laughs> I have yet to take out my phone and show videos of Elvis sleeping, eating, <laughs> Drinking on play dates, but you better believe, even before I go on a date, I'm seeing pictures of this no. dog all no. over the world. No. That's all over Wait, the hold world. on. Please don't tell me this has happened more than once. Oh, every single man are in you LA I has didn't a dog know this was a thing that they are it's obsessed a thing. with. Have you been? Oh, you, maybe you haven't been on a dating app yet. If you no. are, if you're on a dating app, there's three rules to every man and. They have a dog, they surf, and they snowboard or ski. And every picture revolves around those three things. Yeah. And then there's usually one with a niece or a nephew. Just to oh, show yeah. that. Like, <laughs> I like uncle. I'm a, good, I'm a funko. <laughs> I always hear people it's okay. like, I'm sure, I, I swear to God, I do love men. I'm sure there's the female equivalent <laughs> to all of this, but I can't speak oh, on that. Oh, I wonder what So I'm it just is. speaking on the See, male equivalent. See, I want to play the game now. I'm like, yeah, what would well, it be no, they do it for, for females. Side. It's like at brunch. Oh, like, yeah, that could you be know, good. But yeah, um, brunch, probably in, playing tennis or something. Or like pickleball, yoga. Pickleball, yes. We're pickleballing. Um, we're probably on a hike in some skimpy outfit. Exactly. Uh-huh. On the beach in some skimpy bikini. I'm yep. sure there's lots there's of— There's lots, there, I'm sure. sure we are equally as bad. People are always joking about guys holding up like their fish from fishing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then on the date, um, you hear about their ayahuasca, their recent ayahuasca trip. (laughs) Yes. Every day. Stop it. Every day, every first date is uh, it's like three, two, one. And I recently went to Costa Rica Uh (laughs) and went on an ayahuasca trip. Yes, please expand. Like I want to know all about it. If you would have oh met me God. two weeks ago, I was a completely different person. You're lucky you're meeting me now. Am I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Am I lucky? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, I want to hear. I want. I really do want you to. I really hope no it. one's listening to this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if anyone's listening. <laughs> I'll never go on oh a date again. No, I'm anyway. dying. I think that's so, it's so fucking funny, first of all. And I'm so right on, I'm sure. It's but see, so I just want to go, on. I want to go on someone else's just to look and like scroll through just to see all this shit, yeah. you know, because I think you'll laugh because it's, oh, yeah. It's, I find it very entertaining. Yeah. Do you it find is. people telling you about their ayahuasca trips the same as like telling you about a long, elaborate dreams that you're pretending to be interested Ooh. in? Yes. It starts, it always starts with Kundalini yoga. They're <laughs> into kundalini yoga and then it goes into the ayahuasca trip. it literally is three two one guys yeah. it is so amazing oh my god um, do you think it's an LA thing and you're just like yeah I think, yeah. yeah I think so yeah I mean yeah I, I think would so say. I mean I, I can I can say it is an, an it isn't an LA thing yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah yeah I was on a dating app for almost a year and it is it is a LA every day thing. was almost pretty much most. pretty much yeah pretty yeah. much Oh my god! Like I almost was influenced enough to like fly to Peru and <laughs> do go ayahuasca. on an ayahuasca trip. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm not. I, yeah, it sounds. It actually does sound. Amazing. It sounds a yeah. little intriguing, right? And yes, I mean, I'm half scared, half tempted Same. at this right. point. But yeah. um, but you know, yeah, yeah, I know. Just, you know, it's just I'm giving you the facts. I love the facts and my so end, much. The facts and the like. Act. I just, I love it. And the fact, <laughs> I'm just picturing these dudes. No, my favorite is the dogs on sleepovers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I was away, so he was at my friend's house <laughs> looking at him sleeping next to Kirby. <gasps> Why I mean, you just think, like, like you- I don't know. I don't know. And and the thing is, I'm, I, I had two dogs. I like dogs. I really yeah. do. Yeah, no. It's I- just that. It's just a, it's just a very like it, it, when the obs- it's a very obsessive like when it's obsessive right it's just starting to be like okay where am I gonna fit in 
Yeah. As, if you're dating, if you're, yeah. you're trying to figure out like, how am I going to fit into this person's life? Like, right? Like, especially if we're on a third or fourth date, like, is this going somewhere? Is, is it right. a normal question to ask yourself? So if, if this dog is a very much like obsessive feature, <laughs> then you're like, okay, I'm probably going to always be number two to the dog. So, and then uh, do I like the dog enough to right. sleep with this dog? Um, go to agility training classes with this dog. Like, cause this go to will Peru be, with go this to Peru. dog. <laughs> oh yeah. The dog is always there. So like, so then I'm like, you know, it's like a kid. So like, you have to really just be like, am I invested enough into this dog? Right. But it's as you know, you sit here like with children, like you said, yeah. you're just like, yeah. You have no I like this is not yeah I know. Yes. I love dogs. But yeah. also wouldn't you think <laughs> these countless journeys of ayahuasca <laughs> would wake someone up <laughs> to be able to read the room of like Good I don't point. do that yeah. with my kids. I may show one picture. If yeah. someone's like, "Oh, can I see your kids?" Yes. I might be like, "Here they are. They're really cute. Yeah. Here's one picture." Yeah. Right. And yeah. that's it. I'm not going any further than that. Me too. Yes. If you ask me, sure, I will. Yes. But yeah, you're right. I will keep it to a minimum because I also know like I'm obsessed with my child. I think he's the greatest and cutest thing in the entire world. But like, I don't know you like that yet. You don't know my kid yet. So like, I get it. You don't want to sit here scrolling through pictures of Elvis. Like, right. Nor do I. Like this is, we're trying to see if there's a romantic vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, like, yeah. But it's also like the type of person that like has the wherewithal or like you said, read the room, like just awareness. Yeah. No. uh, Yeah. I don't know. I think that guys. Like dogs. (sighs) I they like, guys they dogs. like dogs. Must love dogs. <laughs> they just, yeah, they really. Yeah, love it's an dogs. awareness thing, and I do think that that's either there or it's not. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I'm gonna tell you I, I, the ayahuasca thing is a little bit of an ick, not in the uh, sense of doing it. Yeah, like if you want to go talking do it, about it, it's the talking about it and sharing the information as if it's going to connect us mm. when really it's just kind of like about you and your yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And if I was on a first date, I'd want to hear more about you as a person. I'd want to be yes. asked questions. Yeah. That's a oh, thing. You know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What was that? Yeah, right. You want to ask a question about me? Yes. That doesn't happen, side note. <laughs> first date with a guy, the guy never asks you any questions about yourself. Hands down, that's nine times out of 10. Nine times nine out of 10. Nine times out of 10. I will leave 10. a date and I'll call up my best friend and I'll go, you didn't ask one question about <gasps> myself. But that's, to me. that's the barometer. Like, that's you just know. that's yeah. our barometer. Yeah. We're always yeah, like, we're like Did how many ask questions? Did you anything about yeah. you? Yeah. You know? Nope. But then like, you know, you'll date someone, whatever, and then they'll just be like, how's your day? I'll be like, Oh my God, like, this is what I did was, you know? He just found me a parking yeah. spot. This is amazing. They're like, this should just be normal. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> but we're yes. like, oh my God, he asked me yes. what my name was. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> and I also love it. How was your day? Because you're just like, well, I mean, like, hi. I, so then you just end up being, what? it was good. Or do you like I, actually like, what say? Do you, yeah, you're like, what do you say? <laughs> like, yeah, well, I woke up at seven and yeah. then, like I made coffee. Like, I mean, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's such a, <laughs> it's such a generic base question, but you're also like, but it's like excited that it was asked. me how, the, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think they need to learn it. Listen, this is what I'm saying. When I actually go on a date where there's a connection, where he is asking me questions and we're <laughs> laughing and talking and you haven't mentioned, even if you have a dog, you haven't mentioned the dog. <laughs> it really is like, please, can I see you again? This right. would be so lovely to go like, on. I thought you were going to say, you please, please oh, yeah. can I see yeah. your dog? <laughs> <laughs> no, where do you live? Yes, yeah. let's go. Let's go. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. No. <laughs> um, yeah, it is a huge selling point. Yeah, it yeah. is a rare day that uh, there is a great first date. Yeah. This is so, so interesting. interesting. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, it just is. Yeah. yeah. And I often wonder for a guy, is it the same? Like, do guys just, I don't know. And I, I'm I'm guessing, like, are their standards lower? Like, I don't know. Like, do they think about any and all of this? Like, did she ask me a question? Did I only just talk about myself? Like, you know, I just wonder, like, because I feel like so many women are in this boat, especially yeah. if you're like, 
around my age and dating, it's like, I, it's the same complaints. So like, I just wonder, are guys just out there killing it? I don't think so. I don't I know. really don't. I think some think they are. Some think they are, but what their narrative is, is that like, it's impossible to find a good girl in LA that doesn't want like your money or clout or any of these things. Mm-hmm. And their perception is that women in LA are just trying to use you or get to the next level in some way. And yeah. when they say that, I'm like, that's not even, I know so many in yeah. the- Incredible women. Same. It's right. a bunk narrative. Yeah. Yes. That want nothing from a man other right. than nothing. awesome, fun companionship. Right. right. Yeah. Like I'm sure obviously the other <laughs> yeah. exists, but yes. it's like yes. what are your standards that are also attracting that in? Or do you think that they meet those women and then they get scared because they're like, oh shit, she's like the real deal. And like maybe I do want just the girl that right. doesn't want anything for real. I don't know. Sometimes I think that too. I do think that I get excited about a person and then I'm like, you know, dude, like, what are you doing? Like, I guess, I don't know. Like, and so then you start playing that game, which is half the time even worse than just having a bad date and being like, bad date, write it off. Okay. Guess I'll be single for life. (laughs) But uh, honestly, you're a dream girl. Oh, yeah. You're very sweet. No, <laughs> you really are. You're like 100%. funny oh. and oh my beautiful, God, beautiful and talented and, and like everything. Oh, guys, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just saying that. I mean, no, it. you are like a, Thank you. you're That's a dream nice girl. You to say. We need to. Well, if you know anyone. I'm like, I, this is what I'm like. <laughs> I know. We need to know anyone. Name. Don't send them a photo. Just tell me where to meet them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, I have a question. How do you feel about making the first move? Asking a guy out, whatever oh, it is. Um, I've done that before. Yeah, I have. I, I didn't mean like going yeah, in. Yeah, but I could. You could. I mean, yeah. Um, I typically won't make the first move, like sexy move. Right. Right. Um, but um, I have made the first move. I've asked guys out before. I've I've slid into a few DMs before. Yeah. yeah. Good for you. I don't have a problem doing that. Yeah. Um, especially if I feel like there's a little bit of a vibe. Yeah. I I I. I don't have a problem. Yeah. But typically, again, like I grew up in Ohio. Yeah. My mom and dad are still married 49 years. And so I'm a little bit of a traditionalist when it comes to like, I don't know. If a guy, I I still go to like, if a guy thinks I'm cute, like he should be brave enough to be like, what are you doing on Saturday night? And like, ask me out, you know? Right. Yeah. But I will do it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. we'll do it I know and I'm we'll like do it. parents divorced when I was not like none of those examples but I'm still such like a traditionalist yeah. romantic you know yes I, yeah. all of the things yeah it's just it's just it's yeah. nice yeah I know you it's know. nice because I think again like I said before once I start to feel comfortable with a guy then like you better watch out because I'm going to turn it up so hot. I'm going to like, <laughs> I'm going to come at you and I'm going to spoil you rotten because I love doing it. Yeah. Uh. So like at first, like, yeah, please make the first moves and be romantic. And then if there's a vibe, like, like I bet let's you get the buckle most up and go. gifts. I am good at gifts when it's not gift giving time. Got it. Mm. At Christmas or th- birthdays, I am at a loss. I can't <laughs> find a thing. And I don't know what to do. But if it's a random day at a random time and I see something, I'll just buy it then and give it to you right then and there. Because I'm like, I just saw this striped top and you love stripes and you right. have to have it. And right. they're like, this is the best striped top. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> but at the birthday, you're not getting anything. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Nothing appears. It's the I pressure. Have, I, have, I have no great ideas. It's like, this is how it is. It's like, she, she likes T-shirts. <laughs> like it's yeah. like I can't yeah but it comes and goes but I'm also um not into get like I don't care about material things I'd rather like if it's your birthday like I said I'm gonna surprise you with like a sleepover yeah. awesome thing or some experience or some memory or moment like I'm a more memory moments person adventure person than like um than a gift right. I, I don't care about yeah. shoes so or your purses love language, or jewelry or anything it's probably what's time. It, time with yeah. Time. Yeah. yeah. Time. Time. What's the thing when you I think is time it, one yeah. of them? Quality time. Quality, quality time. time. Yeah. 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 Make me feel make me feel wanted and yeah. spend time together. Like quality time together. Yeah. 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 I don't it's, need a gift. No. I really don't. Me neither. It's quality time without your dog. Yeah. Quality time without your dog. <laughs> that is the funniest. That is the best. 
I think that's the best one we've heard. <laughs> yeah, it really okay. is. It's so the fact that it exists <laughs> and it's so specific. I hope tonight. He does not. <laughs> I need you to text us and yeah, tell us okay, if he has a dog and you saw and you okay. met the, maybe you even meet the dog. Oh God, I hope not. It just would be so nice. Yeah. Not have that as a, but we'll see. So we'll do see. you always say yes? Are um, you, like if someone wants to set you up or you're always yeah. like, yeah, I'll try. I will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If somebody wants to set me up, I feel like uh, even if they only know me a little bit, they get enough of a vibe yep. to be like, if they're thinking in their right. head, I might have somebody for you, then yeah, I think it is worth my time to go meet for like a coffee, a drink, or a dinner or something. You know, what's the worst that can happen? I can talk to a wall. So like if <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'll i sit and talk to anybody and I love being out and about. So like, sure, I'll go meet you for a drink or, or a dinner. Like, yeah, let's do it. And then if by chance there's it's an awesome person, like, wow, that'd be... Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So you never That's know. That's great. I would imagine people want to set you up a lot. They don't actually, but really? um, I've gone through, I mean, I feel like it ebbs and flows yeah. where like, yeah. I have like a lot of people saying, go meet this person, come meet this person. And then nothing. Um, right now it's a little bit, it's a, a little bit people are reaching out, which is nice. Yeah. 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 Because you're going to be ridiculously happy. I'm going to be ridiculously happy. <laughs> We're all going to be ridiculous. I'm ridiculously happy That's just right. talking to you. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Good. It's contagious. <laughs> it is contagious. Oh, We're all you're, you're so happy. Yeah. You're just so amazing and so happy that you said yes to coming. Oh, thanks for us. having me, guys. I know. It's so fun. I so feel like we could fun. just chat all time. I was going to say, we're going to keep this yeah, going because I want to know. We're fully invested. <laughs> we are really invested. Like, oh, my God. I will let you know how this date goes tonight. Yeah. So. I can't wait to hear. Oh, my God. Thank you That's so much. Awesome. You're welcome. Thank you. You guys. Yes. Last night, Briar and I, once a month, there's family night. Whoops. (laughs) There's family night from her school, which is no homework. So after gymnastics, Briar came home, we had dinner, and then we got in bed to watch a movie. What'd you watch? Zoe 102. So Zoe 101 was... Jamie Lynn Spears show a long time ago. Yeah. And they made a movie recently, but it's like kind of an adult movie. It's like the kids from high school, but now they're 30. But like, up. Isn't iCarly kind of do the same thing? I don't know. Where they were we haven't gone there yet. Show and then I think it's back on like Peacock. Then yes. And I, probably. It's the same cast. They're a little grown up. Same cast, except my, like Victoria Justice isn't in the movie. She was in the show. Um, and we're watching it, and it's kind of an adult movie. But you guys, I was loving it, okay? There's a scene where they're, like, at a bar, and they're karaoke these two dudes. And he's they're, like, in competition. And all of a sudden, now I had— Okay, so it's the dirty dancing. And they're, like, battling. And this one dude goes to fight the dude. And he runs off the stage to attack the guy. But the guy just goes and puts him into the dirty dancing lap. Oh my god, it was the best part of my night. I'm sorry. Oh, you're turning red and sweating. <laughs> what are you drinking in there? What are you doing? <laughs> so much coffee. That's regular coffee? No, it's oh a my god. fog. I don't think I've ever seen you so excited <laughs> about something. I'm so excited. About a movie. This is this no. is Rachel's pick for movie of the year. Yeah. <laughs> you guys. Did you watch the family switch? Whew, no. It's so good. Is that the Jennifer Garner one? Yes. Did no, we should it? watch it. It's really good. Did you have you guys? How have you been keeping up on uh, the Kardashians? Yeah, <laughs> exactly what I was going to ask. <laughs> uh, all the like Oscar contenders and I've, Globes contenders. So have you seen them? I feel like I've so seen good. none. Seen I watched none of them. Barbie on the airplane. Finally, That's I still haven't seen Barbie yet. Okay. It's good. Yeah, it's really good. Did you see Poor Things yet? I have not seen anything. Not a thing. You guys should go see Poor Things. Did you we like it? see oh, everything. You, you loved it. Saltburn also. Oh, We know, yeah. Rob. I keep telling myself I'm going to do that when the kids go to sleep. It's on Amazon now. Free. That's not the issue. I did see that, that it was on Amazon. Yeah. I watched Elvis, and it took me three nights to get through it because… The Sofia Coppola one? No. That's Priscilla. That's Priscilla. Oh. The Austin Butler one, probably. Yeah. Oh, got it. But it took three nights to get through one movie. That's the point. Oh. You know, yeah, it's hard. Happen. So you didn't love it. 
Oh my God, it has nothing to do with the movie. Oh, it just has to do no, with you No, it has taking... to do with me falling asleep right. because… Got it. I went, Real. I went to movies by myself last night. Oh, that was What'd your What did you dream? see? Wait, and I sent you that meme. <laughs> or what? that with the one person. Oh, yeah. I almost did. I sent, I made a similar one and sent it to Jeff. And I was like, I think I'm going to buy this seat next to the one. <laughs> I sent it to him. Low seat. And this person was like, there's one seat already taken in the theater. And they went to reserve their seat. And they reserved the seat right next to the one <laughs> seat. And he's like, this person's just going to love. It's like, I sent it to Rob. You would I, do I that. I almost did it. Exactly. Oh, my God. What did you see? That'd be went, Jeff's nightmare. Went and saw Godzilla minus one. The new Godzilla movie? No idea what that is. Wow, my kids would love that. It's great. Yeah, they it's would love like, it. It's the new Japanese Godzilla movie. That's a, that is actually something I will go do with my children. Uh, they'll have to read subtitles. But, <laughs> duh. Okay. They don't care. They just like watching it. All right. You know? Okay. Yeah. Shepard will be all about it. Shepard has been a fucking nightmare. Sorry. Tell. Do tell. Let's hear. It's been hard. It's yeah. been really hard because we started a new school. Mm -hmm. We moved. It's tough. Uh, lots of adjustments. Are it's a off. lot of adjustments. I met with a mm, not mediator. That sounds like divorce. A medium. You went to a medium. <laughs> a psychic. I met with an advocate yesterday. And I feel like they're going to be really helpful. I started crying. An advocate? Explain. <sighs> So when you have a kid with special needs, there's all kinds of services, right? Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of things in the school. There's all kinds of things you need. And I mean, I'm so laughing. It's like, I should not be laughing at all yeah, when no. you're talking about this stuff. And that thing happened. She had her coffee or what, what tea happened? on there. And the thing happened where you like the most like, oh. where you're not supposed to laugh at all. Because <laughs> Like so inappropriate. <laughs> and I got it. And I got it. She's winning at me like I'm responsible. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God. So you're like, oh my God. Right. It, but you know what? If you can't break out in laughter when you're talking about these things, oh. then fuck. Oh my God. I'm sorry. You know? Oh shit! Okay, I'm uh, sorry. Can she continue? <laughs> no, I don't need I'm to crying. continue. No, you need to basically. Continue. You Explain hire it. someone to help you navigate all the systems that you have to navigate. Okay. And the girl I met with her two women and <laughs> <laughs> this is hilarious. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm fully crying. Mass like. Real tears. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, I think God. I have to leave the room for you to finish. I don't want to finish. <laughs> She's helping you figure out how to deal with the shepherd. It's good. It's good yeah. work. So you hired her. She's going to help you. <laughs> Did we ever tell you when we did this in our at our friend's play? We were, we, have. we were front yeah. row. During Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> we fucking lost it. <laughs> lost we had it. To like this, we had to walk out in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And the House of Pies. And the House of Pies. Oh, that I was still the can best. picture her. I can picture her too. The waitress <laughs> caught our laugh. She didn't know we us. She, she wasn't even our waitress. <laughs> so she would put a menu when she walked by us to not. not I'm, sure that, I'm sure that helped. <laughs> up and walk by. Oh my God. That was like 20. Oh my God. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Hold on. Wait. We covered. We talked. We're fine. Advocate. We're, We're good. Fine. Okay. Okay. We're fine. I, <laughs> speaking of like House of Pies days. Yeah. <laughs> what? No. 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 Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. We were we speaking. <laughs> No. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh okay. My god. Speaking of house of pies, I should say when we would when we would frequent house <laughs> She lost it. Why doesn't Rob ever catch it? Like, are you a sociopath? <laughs> 
Are you? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Everything's hot. <laughs> Okay, go okay, ahead. Okay, I found these journals. Like, I was cleaning out oh, yeah. a closet. And I found these journals yesterday. <laughs> what if I start crying and doing the opposite? <laughs> like you're talking about something funny. <laughs> and you start crying. <laughs> okay. One. Actually, I don't even think it's going to be funny now. <laughs> but detail. these journals were from like 2003, like when I first started the OC. And it was in detail. And it's daily, hilarious. The dir- daily journal? It was like, dear diary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, one, Olivia and I went to, was it The Grove, I said? We went to The Grove and saw Love Actually in the theater. Oh, yeah. Which was like, oh my God. That was a long time. We saw it in the theater. I don't remember that at all. Not like at the all. the last Do time you? you guys went to the movie theater? Yes. Probably. So we're talking about movie theaters. My favorite part, though, is like, I'm talking about something. <laughs> you meant it's love, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just going to stop. Rob, tell us no, the story. please. Go. Your favorite part. Go, go, go. No, go. it wasn't my, my you sound part. sound like an Olivia. You'll be fine. <laughs> I don't think this is going to be funny. I was just talking in detail about that time. And then it just abruptly stops. And the next page… So that's 2003. The next page is 2007. <laughs> and then everything, like, I can't even talk about it because for it to be funny, I'd have to give the details of it. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> Welcome to Broad Ideas. So that happened. So that happened. We went to see Love Actually in the theater. That's actually something I had no idea happened. Yeah, right? That's actually something you do. <laughs> Love actually something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was thinking about something this morning. I wanted to know what you guys think about. Do you know about the burnt toast theory? That if you smell burnt toast, you're going to have... A... <laughs> okay, sorry. No, say it. Say it. If you No, want... I don't want to get it wrong. There's something though. If you're smelling burnt toast, they think... What is it? So that's not it. <laughs> it's, do you it's... know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah. I mean… Isn't it? You're like having a heart attack or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> totally different direction. Okay. So the burnt toast theory <laughs> is like… It's the theory that the things that annoy us are really what makes us miss the flight that would have ended things or… Oh, it's what annoys us? Is like what? burnt oh. toast. Like that's fucking annoying. I have to make my toast ah. again. And it's like that two minutes could have changed… <sighs> I've got so many serious things to I talk know. about. Okay. Just don't cool. look at me. That it could change. <laughs> I, can't. I can't. Don't look at her. And I'll just. Be I need a here. menu. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue. Word by word. <laughs> that that two minutes that you have to remake your toast could change the whole entire course of your life. And if we could spend more time being grateful for the small annoyances and knowing it's all part of the plan versus being annoyed, does that ever cross your mind? Put the book down. <laughs> Put the book down. Uh-huh. Put the book down. No. Oh, this is this is a small annoyance. Oh. I'm just kidding. No, I know what you're saying. But what's the question? To, like… That, does that theory ever cross your mind? Or do you just get irritated? Like when you're in traffic, you're like, no. so annoying. That theory never crosses my mind. Well, you, maybe you didn't know it was the bur- toast theory. But does it ever cross your mind when you're in traffic that… Where did you hear about the burnt toast theory? It's something that passes around… What? My circuits. Oh. <laughs> that makes sense. I, also I bet the there's five. people that are sitting in the car right now in traffic, irritated that they're in traffic. Right. Or irritated that someone cut them off and right, right, whatever, right. whatever, whatever. I always think about, I always do this. Like if something happens and I'm like, oh, what if, and if I would have just turned here, what if I would have died? You know what I mean? Like those thoughts though of like those choices and whatever, yeah. annoyances or decisions. <laughs> He's laughing. Good. Finally. <laughs> I got serious. Rob's like, this is hilarious. (laughs) No, No. because the way you said it, you're like, yes, I always think about if I would have turned right, I would die. die. (laughs) I do think about that though. Yeah, no, it's interesting. It's really morbid. I do that a lot. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Anyway. I've had that thought. I remember when being a kid, there was like, 
uh, one of the streets, a tree came down and hit this car Oof. and smashed and killed well, it's- the person. And like he was hmm. half a second faster or right. waited at a stop sign right. a then little they bit longer have- than that tree wouldn't have got him. Right. It, what is it? Final Destination? Is that the movie where they always show all those things? Like the log being carried and it goes through the... Yeah. Yep. Don't you think that Cheating when death. you drive behind... Every time you see a logging truck? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think those things happen in the positive as well? Olivia's like, that's what I'm trying to get at here. And you guys just went down the dark <laughs> You're like, And hole. then when they die, when the axe <laughs> cuts through their head. No, but like, do you think that there's... Because obviously, like if when someone dies, you're always like... Dang. No, I'm, like something could have pushed it another direction. It's yeah. like too big of a web to think about what could have happened. I mean, that's what everything, everywhere, all at once is. It's all these like little micro right. universes based on one little decision changing everything. Oh. So that's basically my question is, do you, and I guess not, because you're like, that's too big to look at. I was. Well, it's just not helpful. Like why? Because you could use it in the positive. That sure. every choice I make has a consequence, whether positive or negative. Yeah, so but it then, gives you more dominion over your choices. But then that's also like everything is fully random and out of my control because if I let someone go in front of me at the coffee line, that could determine whether I'm at a street or like at a place where I'm yeah. crushed by a piano falling from a But right. I do yeah. I think about anytime there's like a horrible story, which there's so many horrible stories. I know I went there again. But that's when I think about it. Like, yeah. what if? Yeah, one little thing yeah. could have altered that. For yeah, me. when you but, hear about uh, these crazy, tragic things that happen that are like so unbelievable, you're like, what if they just didn't step out off the curb at that second? Isn't know? that wild? Yeah. My, don't laugh. No, what? Well, my grandfather... My great grandfather, the way he died. Oh no, he was hit by a trolley. <laughs> and was he in San Francisco? I don't know. He was died. He, That's how he died. He got hit by a trolley. Yeah. So it's like if he didn't step out right. of that moment. That's the moment, same thing. Yeah. Like that moment, if he didn't. Yeah. But let's think about it. What if you had diarrhea the day you were supposed to audition for the OC? You know, so it's like right. it happens in those ways too. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. A good thing happened by. I know I have so many examples minutes, of this too. You know, like if you think, yeah, because if you would have gotten a tummy ache twenty minutes before going in that audition, or what if someone broke up with you the day before and you weren't on your game? Like, I'm trying to think if there is an example that I can think of. in the positive. Yeah, I think about it with even just making the decision to go to the school I went to. That was like Mm. such a quick decision I made and it changed the course of my life because I met Jeff there. Right. I wouldn't have my children. I wouldn't, like that choice was made super fast. How is that serving you though? (laughs) 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 No, how is like (laughs) knowing that this like seemingly random, spontaneous decision is the foundation for your family existing or not? What is that doing okay. for you? Yeah, it's doing great things because here's <laughs> why. I think powerful choices have powerful com- consequences, whether it's positive or negative, right? But aren't you talking about like little micro decisions that are seemingly not big Yeah, but that decisions? was a big one. You asked me how that was serving me. So it served me in the same way as getting sober that decision changed the whole course of my life. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, going to school changed the whole course of my life. Yeah, but we're talking right now about whether she's got diarrhea or not. I don't have diarrhea, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we know, you're winning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I mean, sometimes I remind myself when I'm getting super irritated or overwhelmed, like, it's okay. Like This could have saved my life. Or like maybe... <clears throat> sometimes it's running into someone in the elevator and you share something with them or they share something with you that changes your day. Right. I know you don't do that. <laughs> you don't even go in elevators. I get what you're saying and I understand oh, it. And there are like, yeah, moments you can point back to that are like that. I guess I just don't know what we're talking about. But do you think things that. are orchestrated? 
Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I went to a friend's birthday dinner, and this is another example of that. Okay? This is the story I've heard already a couple times. Which one? Okay, go ahead. A couple times? Go. No, I'm just wondering. I just wanted to know which way you were going, but I'm going to find out. I'm I'm not going to speak. No! (laughs) I'm done. (gasps) This is what I do to Jeff. I'm done. Jeff, the other day at the farmer's market again, was like, it's really hitting me like, Never realized how much you and I are alike. <laughs> they really, they really are alike. I know. They really are. Yeah. That's why I'm her work wife. It. Yeah. He's your wife. <laughs> wife. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What were you going to say though? I was just going to say I went to a friend's <laughs> birthday dinner <laughs> and it was name tags, right? Like, oh, like place settings? Yes. How do you feel about that? So that's a great, great question. Yes. Yes. Really a great question. Yeah. The world has been waiting to know. No, it's a How thing. Do you feel about places? You'll have your turn. Go ahead. I felt great about it that night because I was sat next to someone I know. Okay. And so that felt good. And then I was sat by Jeff. And then there was someone across from me that I didn't know. And I don't know the rest of her friends. Right. But the person that sat across from me yes. happened to have a child with special needs. And we got mm. into it and she was teaching me so much and she was amazing. And I was like, hmm, by Alana deciding to put those place right. cards, she changed the course of our lives because that woman uh-huh. has a lot of help for me. Right. Is, did she lead you to this advocate that you met with? Is no, she this not advocate? her, but she's giving me a lawyer. Oh, okay. Yeah, Divorce great. attorney? She has a podcast on... Help, like, navigating oh, really? children that are neurodivergent and stuff. What do you need a lawyer for? To sue the school district. Okay. I'm not there yet. Whole yeah. other I'm not there right. yet. That's it sounded like you were uh, need a divorce attorney. No. <laughs> no. I'm happily married. Okay? Jeff is too much like Rachel. I choose Happily these married. Two. Happily married. Yep. We're simpatico. Yeah. Uh, did she intentionally put you guys across from one another? Nope. No, but do you know people that randomly put names down? But at least she put you next to someone you know and your husband. I hate when you go to like a dinner party or something and the host or whatever puts name tags and they purposely separate you from anyone you know. That is like crippling anxiety for me. I hate that. You hate it too, but you love talking to people and you hate it. So I feel better that I hate it. Uh, Yeah. Have you seen that curb episode? I'm sure. I mean. I'm sure like Lair. It's an it's a newer one, I think. Oh, it is like now. Middle tabling and that. Oh one. yeah, yeah, yeah. What yes. is it? What is it? Middle. T- yes, Certain I saw that episode. Certain people have to be in the middle, right? Otherwise, he's like, "Why am I not a middle?" They they have to carry the conversation. <laughs> yes, they put the stronger like conversationalist. social conversationalist. And wasn't Larry like, "Why am I not a middle?" Oh, well, he they, wasn't they, a middle. They, they go to a dinner. <laughs> they put the wrong people in the middle. Oh yeah, that's and it's just like. Fully derailed and boring. And everyone's like <laughs> so mad. And then he goes in the kitchen and Susie's like, what's happening? And he's like, well, you put the wrong people in the middle. Yeah. And then he just goes and switches it. And it changes <laughs> the whole evening. He's Larry, like, I'm going to sit in the middle. Love of my life. That's good stuff. I tell you, it is good stuff. Okay, go ahead and ask the question. But how do you feel about the name tags really quickly? If you're at a dinner or whatever. And do you want to bother be, you? Would it bother you if you were separated from the people you know? I wouldn't like that. Uh, well, what about do when that, separate, especially like, at like weddings and yeah. stuff? What if they separate you and Natalie? Like, depends on what it is. I knew like, he was going to say, like, because yeah. he always does that. I know. It depends <laughs> if I know people there or not. If it's like a bunch of people I'm comfortable with, then like, sure, right. split us up. But or if, if it's, it's not, if that's it's so like uncomfortable, all right? Natalie's friends <laughs> or like, oh, awkward. awkward people I don't know. Yeah. Like, if I'm separated, I'm going to just move right. seeds. One more thing on that. What? So, yes, I love talking to people, but I do think if you're sitting next to me, yeah. I'm going to have a greater chance of talking to people than if I'm alone. It's like it gives you that, like— Security blanket. Security blanket. That's how I feel. Yeah. I'm way more talkative if, like, you're with me or Leah's with me. Yeah. Not you. <laughs> Wait, the two of you together somewhere alone? So awkward. Me and you? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That would be a little awkward. We'd be wallflowers. You guys would be like, no. We would just be wallflowers. You're actually more social than you would think. Rob is. is. If I know. If it's full strangers, I'm not. 
I'm saying to put you and Rachel with full strangers, strangers. Yeah, is something like that I would want to watch. We would just like <laughs> sit in the corner and whisper and yeah. like fully close off. Oh my God. Yeah. My nightmare. Okay. <laughs> She'd be Let's... like, I have to pee. Come with me. I know. I'd be like, I have to pee. Come with me. <laughs> so good. Oh, it's been a good day so far. <laughs> yeah. I feel better. Good. Well, just being with you is yeah. better. Don't you? Yeah. See what this does for you. That's why you moved closer and that changed everything. The course of your life. I paid my wife for sex. This mm-hmm. seems like a terrible Wait, mistake. Wait, what? But I Love can't it. tell how bad yet. Wait, I paid my wife for sex? Yes. This is a 42-year-old male talking okay. about his 42-year-old female wife. Okay. I've been married to my wife for 14 years. We have two daughters. For the first few years, we had a good sex life. Then it dropped back significantly. She stopped instigating and would decline if I did. Oof. When I ask, she has several reasons she rotates through. We're too old, nobody has sex that often, or she's too big now. She gained a lot of weight. And I know it bothers her, but I can't say which came first. She always seems to believe we've had sex in the last week or two, even though it's been six months. <gasps> oh! Since the kids were born, we have sex three or four times a year, usually twice around Christmas and once or twice in the spring and fall. It's the same every time and the way she's decided it should be. I rub her back and neck. She gives me a couple squeezes and tugs. I go down on her because it's the fastest and most reliable for her to have a couple orgasms. Then she lays on her back impatiently while I climb on top. It's not ideal. Is there a question? Wait, is there a question or is this like a little erotic pause for reaction? Yeah, pause for reaction. (laughs) Dramatic pause. Okay. Um, All right. This Christmas, I got her a small gift that she really appreciated afterwards. A dildo? When we had our Christmas sex, she went down on me briefly, which she hadn't done in years, and asked if there was anything else I wanted. I asked if she'd get on top and wear lingerie, and she said it wasn't that nice of a gift. She's funny. She's funny. I told her I'd get <laughs> I told her I'd get her two more. She wanted something else instead, and we ended up naming a dollar amount. At the time I really didn't care that it was weird or might have repercussions. A few days later, she mentioned something expensive that she wanted to buy. I gave her money for it, and that led to her cheerfully giving me the first blowjob I've had in years. It's continued happening since then. Part of me is thrilled. I like That's that we're having sex. Life. I like that there's variety and I like that I get some input into what we do. I've been in a really good mood all year and so has she. On the other hand, it seems like this is probably offensive and insulting. It seems like I'm too close to the situation. I'm heavily influenced by the fact that I've had more sex this year than the last three combined. Am I being paranoid or is this going to blow up in my face? It was misleading to say he pays her for sex. Because yeah. he's just buying our gifts, things she wants. Seems like it is, though. It's an exchange. It's transactional. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to do this. Right. I don't see you. anything wrong with that whatsoever. I love being paid for sex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I don't see anything at all wrong with that. Why, if you're both happy and you're cool with the, if you're cool with the agreement, you're both happy, who cares? I just think it goes down to like all relationships have compromise, right? So if this is where you're meeting in the middle and you're both okay with it, I don't see anything well, wrong with it's that. Making him uncomfortable that it seems transactional, they just then like talk to her about phrasing it in a different way. Well, I think he's just uncomfortable with the idea of it, but he sounds happy. Yeah. Right? So if you're happy, who cares? Right. I don't see anything wrong with that personally. It doesn't sound that crazy to me. No. Is it supposed to be? Like, are we missing something? No, I think it's it's just the transactional nature of it. I Which, think if that, that helps spark and yeah. like reignite things in their well, sex life, then great. I know. You know, I'm sure certain people need some motivation to do things. Maybe it's not their favorite thing to do, right? Like, acts, whatever, in sexual relations. Yeah. I'm so careful what I'm saying I know right you now. Are. I also think that there's guys that, like, I have a friend who used to have sex with someone, then he would pay her afterwards. What? Yeah. I'll download you. But um, he would pay her afterwards, and she didn't want the money. She'd be like, I don't need money. But then he enjoyed giving her money. And so finally, she was like, okay. 
like, I was going to have sex with you anyways. And he's like, that's fine. Part of his kink was paying her after. Part of his kink was paying her. I mean, it was just, I guess, not super different than like buying dinner beforehand or. That's exactly. It's like, there's so many ways you are doing exchanges in so many different areas. If you feel good about it and it's not like a pressure on you, then there's nothing wrong with it. But if it's like, you have to do this for yeah. this, that's well, a whole different. I, th- I think that's where it could get slippery in that situation if he's just buying her things and expecting it. Of like, well, I'm, I bought you this necklace. Now you have to do this. Right. There's a difference between agreements and expectations. Yeah. Yeah. So that's as long what as they're down to. as yeah. long as they're clear about it, then I don't think there's anything wrong with it either. I'm gonna start paying Jeff <laughs> with his money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that didn't seem that crazy to me. No. Mm-mm. Have you ever paid for sex? <laughs> no. Would you if you were single? No. Have you ever paid for sex? I've never. No. I never Never had sex. (laughs) I've never. Have you? I've never had sex. Have you, uh, have you, either of you been paid? No. Been paid? Paid for sex. (laughs) No. No. Or uh, or like. Proposition. Proposition. Not. Have you had any sort of transactional, like, hey, go take the dog out tonight and we can have sex. Oh, deals? Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. No? I don't think so. Not that I can recall. (laughs) Oh, I've definitely had deals. Yeah. I will do things for naps. It's true. She will. Jeff's, I well, will work for naps. Yeah. It's not even a joke. Yeah, she'll be like, I will give I will you- do this if I get an hour nap. Deal. Deal. Both feel great about it. Is yours the reverse though? Like you're asking Jeff to do things in an exchange? I'm the one offering. Yeah, she's offering so she can get yeah. her nap. But he's, he's not, not like, like, can I get a yeah. thing and you can get a nap? No. Well, no, no. But he's not like, I'll go do the dishes if we can have sex. Or you're no. saying, or he's not telling you to go do the dishes so that you're Oh, willing. I'm not working for it? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I will barter. Mm-hmm. And I don't feel like there's anything wrong with that. I don't either. Do you guys barter? Yeah, occasionally. They'll be like... Yeah. I feel like that's like maybe more common in like a marriage with kids or whatever. And you'll be like, hey... There's all this stuff to do tonight and I'm not going to be in the mood to do this unless I get some help here and there. Exactly. I do think Gladly go do these things if... Yes, I think that's I do think there's normal. certain people out there in the world, though, that if you ever talk about any of the acts of it, they're like, what not into it. What do you mean? It's like, no, if it's not like spontaneous. spontaneous. Yeah. Like, if it's planned out. I mean, try being married for 11 years and not ever talk about it. Right? Right. Like, the truth of the matter there's, is… That's not maybe a reality. Like a realistic I expectation? I or? don't think it's a realistic expectation. And I think that also… Yeah, it's like schedule and figuring out like there's logistics to it. Yeah, we have it on our calendar. You have it on your calendar. I no. can imagine Rob like, having it like, all. And then, <laughs> yeah, at noon, here's the thing. That's great. Spontaneity is wonderful. All those things, right? But it depends on what both partners' needs are. Mm. Sometimes the other partner needs to be like, I want to have sex. And they Uh need to be able to have that need met too. And the other partner's need could be, I need it spontaneous. So it's like… Well, I think a lot of women traditionally can't just like think about wanting to have sex and then get turned on. There needs to be a physical aspect that happens first Mm. or they're willing. There's certain times in the month though where (laughs) I think girls are more willing. Well, okay. Okay, we'll, We'll not have it gendered. I think… I think there are two mm. different types of people, people. Okay. in yes. sexual relations. Like one that's just ready to go, right. thinking about it, like I can turn it on. And the other that needs a little more physical touch before they can. Or emotional get touch. Or emotional. Mm. Or connection. Although yeah, I've yeah. heard from so many women that they need that connection time first, right? Which I find strange. But <laughs> I. Also, I think that people's timing is different. It's like, 
for a guy, it could be like, you could be in the middle of doing 300 things and they want to do it. And you're like, I'm like holding our children or the laundry or whatever. Mm -hmm. You're not necessarily in the mood, Mm -hmm. but you make sacrifices. Right. Or uh, sorry, not sacrifices, compromises. Compromises. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I'll get back to you guys when I hit my 12-year mark and I'll let you know how it's going. (laughs) (laughs) That was a lot of information. Yeah. We handled a lot of information. Guys. Oh, Great work. I should check on our food. Yeah. I think it's here. Let's go eat. Let's go eat. Bye. (laughs) 